What's up you guys, I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about progressive web apps or PWAs. So let's get started. So first of all, what is a progressive web app? If you Google this, the definition that comes up is a progressive web application is a type of application software delivered through the web but using common web technologies including HTML, CSS and JavaScript, it is intended to work on any platform that uses a standard compliant browser. So basically progressive web apps are an enhanced version of a web app. So let's say you build a web app with React or Vue.js, something like that. There are a few extra things that you need to build along with your web app that will enable you to ship it as a progressive web app. So being a PWA gives your web app uh, extra capabilities, things like offline usage, and uh, push notifications and most importantly the users of your web app can install it as a normal app on their mobile phone or their computer so progressive web app is trying to bridge the gap between a native app and a web app it doesn't sound that straightforward even if you look at google's uh, pwa website it's not very straightforward what a progressive web app is so in order to explain to you better i'm going to show you a real demo of a real native app versus a progressive web app all right, so let's look at the Twitter application, for example. Twitter is, this app is the native app that you get from the App Store, and it, it has all the features. It has your sidebar and your search, notifications, stuff like that. Similarly, this application is the Twitter web application, which is a progressive web app, which I have downloaded and installed from my web browser. So this is your web app. As you can see, it's very similar to the native application. It has your, uh, you know, the sidebar, search, notifications and you can do pretty much anything that you can do with the normal app you can also do with the uh, progressive web app some things uh, you can call it a lighter version of the native app but it has all the capabilities and if I turn off my data you can see that I can still use the progressive web application as well as the native app right so the images won't load obviously because images need network to fetch but you can read the tweets and there are a bunch of tweets that you can keep reading and this is working offline right you can go and try other pages and they need to work offline as well so if you go to the twitter app again it's offline so uh, similarly it has a bunch of images loaded and later the images don't load as we don't have a network connection but uh, that's about it so that's the twitter web application so as we saw twitter is a great example for a progressive web application more importantly it fits the use case perfectly so for a progressive web app you're looking at a web application that looks and feels like a native application and it can work off offline and it can do a bunch of stuff so if i want to tweet something i'll write my new tweet and post it and it will be saved on my local uh, cache once i go online once my phone is able to connect to the internet it will push that tweet to the twitter servers and that will go live so now that we have gotten an intro of what progressive web apps are i want to tell you that uh, they might not have all the capabilities that the native apps offer right For, with a native application you can access resources such as your phone's camera and its you know, sensors the support for using these uh, hardware resources is still limited on the pwa side but it's growing it's a new technology and google is continuing to push it hard if you look at the capabilities offered by the pwa you get to use your app offline and you get to send push notifications to the users in fact google also allows you to add your progressive web app to the google play store and it it is expected that you know since pwa as a concept was introduced by google and you know they st sort of standardized it so google is uh, more forward with respect to pwas and uh, with respect to the support they provide so if your user base is mostly on android then it makes sense to just build a pwa and go ahead with your product because pw has greater support with android operating system and on apple earlier apple didn't allow you to use the capabilities of a pwa but slowly they've started to incorporate pwas in their ios ecosystem so right now you can install a uh, progressive web apps from your safari web browser by going to your browser and saying add to home screen or in your android you can even get a notification when you open a website it will say add this to home screen and if you click on that it will be added to your home screen as a normal app in your app door and you can open it and uh, use it directly without going to your web browser so that's about the progressive web app now what makes a web app a progressive web app right uh, so if you go to google and search for progressive web app checklist you'll find a list of things that you need to do that your web app needs to do in order to be qualified as a progressive web app things like you need to implement something called a service worker service worker is a javascript program which uh, which sort of bridges the gap between network and cache right so if you don't have network how do you make your uh, requests so your service worker is supposed to handle 
handle all the caching of network requests so that your requests can be fulfilled locally without being connected to the internet and it provides a bunch of other uh, features so you, you need to have a service worker you need to have a web app manifest which will include things like your app icon so if users want to install your progressive web app on their home screen what icon do they use for the app app name and stuff like that so you need a web app manifest and there's a bunch of other things that you need to do in order to qualify for a progressive web app and Google Chrome developer tools have really uh, great extensions for checking your progressive web app. There's something called Lighthouse. You can load your web application and you can go to Lighthouse audit and you can see what items you've already implemented, what you need to implement to qualify as a progressive web app. And also since progressive web app was introduced by Google, Google is also uh, more supportive if you want to build progressive web app, right? They will help you with search engine rankings, better SEO scores and stuff like that. So definitely it's a good thing to build a PW provided you have the time and you fit the use case, right? For example, if you're building something like a YouTube, it doesn't make any sense to use a progressive web app since basically you're going to be streaming videos and you can't really store all these videos offline. So it's best that YouTube is not a progressive web app, but on the other hand, something like Gmail can be a progressive web app because you have a bunch of emails that you've loaded and you want to read them and you only want to go online when you want to fetch new emails, right? So Gmail could make a great progressive web app, for example. Now coming to the comparison with native apps, right? PWS definitely can't beat native apps in terms of the functionality and features offered just because your native apps have much more capabilities to uh, you know access your phone's hardware resources but if you want to build a product fast and ship it to your users so pws is a great way to do that and it's it minimizes your budget right you can write one progressive web app which will be your web app which runs on your phone your android ios your computer your ipad so it's truly one app that runs everywhere and obviously it has to be a responsive web app and if you have the right use case then making a progressive web app is definitely useful your progressive web app will almost never be a replacement for a full native app but when you're starting out it makes sense to build a progressive web app and distribute it to your users to gain feedback and just to validate the idea right do people want to use your app so then uh, build a progressive web app and you know get feedback and if there's really traction people are liking your web app then you can go ahead and invest more time and resources on coming up with native apps or hybrid apps like Flutter or React Native or you know directly go with Swift or Kotlin based Android or iOS apps. So that's the next step, right? You can start off with a progressive web app. I would say it's pretty straightforward to implement since you're building a web app. There's a few more things you need to do to your web app. It adds a little layer of complexity to your web app, but overall it makes sense because the you get a lot of value, you get a lot of bang for your buck basically, right? To conclude, progressive web apps cannot replace your Flutter or uh, react native based apps or your native uh, truly native apps but progressive web app is a great technology and it, it's continuing to mature uh, you never know in the next two three years maybe progressive web apps have enough capabilities to replace something like a flutter or react native application and it's a great technology to learn right if you can if you can make a simple web app and make it a progressive web app then you have you have touched almost everything there is to uh, become a software engineer and to become a web developer. So definitely try to build at least one progressive web app so that you learn how the web works, how the browser works. There's a bunch of web APIs that you can use, the local storage APIs, caching APIs. There's a bunch of technologies that you will come across and uh, which will enhance your knowledge in software engineering. So I definitely recommend you build at least a couple of progressive web apps just to learn how it works and the technology. So that's about the progressive web apps and it's a great technology and I believe that there's, mu there's much more scope for progressive web apps in the future. Well, that's it for this video. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and definitely subscribe to my channel for more. And that's it. Thanks for watching.